So Godfall got a new update and with it comes the ailment rework. Each ailment has its own unique effect now and all of them can stab multiple times. The damage dealt is also based on their hits that applies it. Today I will be talking about this build that uses the Rehearse Shame's primary effect to inflict multiple stacks of shock very very fast. So first we have to look at the Rehearse Shame. Whenever you hit a shocked enemy, unleash a shockwave that deals air damage, weapon techniques inflict ailments. If you've played with whole arms before, you might notice that the northern technique of whole arms hit twice. As you can see, there are two blue numbers that popped out, which indicates two hits of the northern technique. Now, if you put rehearse shame in it, Get a new one here. You see three stacks of shock. And what does that mean? It means the first hit applies shock because it's a weapon technique. Then the second hit hits and applies shock again because it's a weapon technique. And the third hit, which is the shock wave, that got procced by the second hit of the weapon technique, is also counted as a weapon technique. So it inflicts shock. So. One Northern Technique gives you three stacks of shock. And the second one gives you four because the enemy is already shocked. So both of the hits will proc the shock wave. Then those shock waves also proc shock. So here we go. One, three stacks. Oh, it's dead. Let me get a tankier enemy. The first hit. Three stacks, and then second hit, seven stacks. Now that you know what the pole arm is about, let's talk about double dipping in damage modifiers. As you can see here, on my ascension power, there's a 40% damage for each type of ailment on the enemy. So in theory, if I apply an ailment, the damage should be increased by 40%. Now, Let's try it without the 40%. And keep in mind that it will not be like exactly 40% because I have ascension bonuses, which I cannot take out. So they also increase my damage and they are additive to each other. So it won't be an exact um, times 1.4, but it will be close. So let's see here. Without the 40%, my ticks are doing three, 339 339 per tick now if i put in the ascension power for the 40 percent damage hit it once 430 so that is about roughly 40 percent damage right a little bit less a bit less because like i said i have ascension power uh, ascension levels that increases my damage a little bit but yeah so when you hit the enemy, the first hit doesn't, when the hit applies, it, the enemy still isn't afflicted with any ailments. So it's still doing the normal damage, but the ailment itself sees the enemy, enemy has an ailment on it. So it gets boosted by 40%. Now, what I'm talking about, the double dipping is when the second hit occurs. So the first hit, 430, right? Second hit. Let's wait for the first stack to run out. Okay, it ran, it ran out. 664. So by adding a 40% increased damage modifier, we, we have increased our damage from 339 to 664, which is almost double. And if you do the math, 1.4 times 1.4 is nearly 2. So the modifiers get counted twice. Once on the hit and then another time on the ailment itself. And this is like old Path of XL double dipping bullshit. But yeah, you get the idea. If you stack a lot of um, modifiers that does that, you're going to get a lot of damage. So now let's look at the build. The most important item in the build and the only quote-unquote mandatory item is the rehearse shame 
And as you can see, mine isn't updated yet. And don't worry, it's the value isn't higher than the new one. It's just because it's primal. And if you have the new one, it will give you weapon technique inflicts ailments. For, so it's just a straight up upgrade. But because my stuff didn't get updated, I have to get the new ones and the old ones are better. So I'm still using the old ones, at, at least because the rolls are better. Now, if you have something like this, it basically just makes the build skyrocket in damage because you hit for another shockwave. This is the primary of the Re Rehearsed Shame and the Gilden Bolt, which is a blue um, blue polearm, right? They, they pretty much do the exact same thing. And if you, like, even if you don't have the Rehearsed Shame, you can also use the Gilden Bolt. But I mean, the Rehearsed Shame isn't that hard to the hard to get right it's i mean even though it's a random drop but it's still it's just a purple so it should be that hard to find when i said if you use the rehearse shame two northern techniques would give you seven stacks if you use something like this two northern techniques will give you 10 stacks and that is why you see me like well, basically one shotting everything um not, not necessarily one shot but you get the idea just applying huge shocks to enemies and for the secondaries, you're aiming for ailment power, damage to shocked enemies, and crit chance if you if you somehow find it. But ailment power is ailment power and damage to shock is the most important stats. Ailment power is a uh, another multiplicative damage to your ailments. It doesn't affect anything other than your ailment damage, as far as as far as I know, because we can't really test. Um, if it actually affects the ailment effect, like chill or like shock, if it if it gives more breach, but it, it's super hard to test. But anyways, we're getting more damage. It's good, and power very good. Um, so the ideal stat, like at least for for example for this weapon, you will want damage to shocked, and one power, and then and one power. Or crit chance. Crit chance is only for the lion talisman, so you gain back your weapon attacking faster, um, and so you clear better. You don't need it for like damage, right? Crit doesn't do anything for the ailment. Your crit damage doesn't apply to the ailment ticks. If you crit or not, the damage is completely the same. So the crit chance is only for you to charge up your weapon technique faster. Um, I'm using this amulet to apply a mark of weakness whenever I apply an ailment. And again, this is a more defensive option. You can use other ones, but overall, I think this is pretty good. And the secondaries, it's the same aim for element power, damage to shock enemies, crit chance if you can. And for the master work, get all resists. The ring, let's talk about the Eye of the Dragon first. So you don't have to use this, and especially if you're using the updated version of the Rehearse Shame. Because you wouldn't need the weapon technique inflict ailments stats because it will be built into the weapon. But because I don't have it, so I have to use the ring so I can inflict the ailment. But also, it gives a lot of overhealth on kill, so might as well use it. And the secondaries are pretty good. It doesn't give me any damage, but it gives me cap to all resists and some more overhealth gain and percent to all resists. So overall, a pretty nice ring here. And as you can see, I'm at sitting at 63% all res. Yeah, so pretty good. But you can definitely use other rings that gives you, like I said, damage to shock, ailment power, and all that good stuff. Um, like the other ring I'm using here, it just gives me ailment power, damage to shock. Um, For the lifestone, you don't have to use this. It's just... It's overkill. You're, you're never really going to use a lifestone anyway. Like in tower right now, you're never going to get to use it. You're just going to pick a bane and your lifestone just basically doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, if you want, you can go for this. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. The banner is the same also. But I mean, this banner gives a lot of damage for this build. So if you want to one shot the boss, like like the clips I'm showing, you use this for a very big damage boost. But it doesn't really matter that much for the augments and this is also the main reason why i'm using mobius on the shock bill you might ask why why mobius she's supposed to be the cursed plate right um simply because she has a ton of vitality augments and 
only one spirit augment, which sucks, and might augment also kind of sucks for um, an ailment build. All the good stuff is on the vitality augment. So, although spirit augments can also roll damage to um, damage to spirit and might, both can roll those like damage to ailment inflicted enemies and even ailment power, I think. But the primary effects on the vitality augments are just way better. And also because the vitality augments will give you um, percent to all resists for the masterwork. So basically every single augment I have here is damage to shock, 5% five, 5 or 6% all res, as you can see. Damage to shock, ailment power also, all res, damage to shock, all res, damage to shock, all res, ailment power, all res. Damage to shock or res. So it's super easy to cap every single resist. You do not need a single resist roll other than the master work run. So it completely negates the RNG factor for farming for very specific um, resist rolls. You only have to get one with damage to shock or ailment power. So it's I will say this build is really easy to put together. And like even if you miss a few of them, it doesn't really matter that much. Just get it as much as you can. So for the primary effects, we're using damage for each type of ailment on an enemy. Same goes with this. These basically do the same thing, right? So we and shock power. If you have sixty percent or more resist, uh, we have that. This is a new item in this update. Um, it is a curse item, so you have to lift the curses to be able to use it at a f at the full strength. Uh, so yeah, very good. 90% shock power is basically 90, 91% more damage for our ailments. And the primary for this, 57 overhealth whenever you defeat an enemy, it doesn't really matter. It's pretty good, but it doesn't really matter. Um, gain a blessing of injuries whenever you parry, pretty good. More tankiness. Um, shock duration minus health recovery. I'm actually considering dropping this because we do so much damage, the shock duration doesn't even matter. Like they they will never survive the shock. So without this, it still works. So you can put it on other things if you want. But I just didn't find anything like it's better than this, so I just kept it. And the last one, this doesn't really matter. Some more will be like need charge speed, but yeah, what matters is the secondary, right? Okay, so for the spirit augment, I'm using sunburst. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe it only procs on actual weapon hits. So like the shockwave, I don't think that proc because I really don't feel like I'm healing that much from this thing. It might be because the minus twenty percent health recovery, but yeah, I really it felt really underwhelming. So if you want to use other things, you can use other things. I don't think this one is really that necessary, but there's really no other spirit augment that's any good for this build. Okay, so for the Might Augment, I'm using Force of Nature for Weapon Technique Charge whenever I defeat an enemy. This is just for when I'm clearing trash mobs, I can just jump around with my Northern Technique and I'll gain it back pretty fast. You can also use the new Cursed Augment that gives you crit chance. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, right here. Yeah, uh, this one. Okay, 7% crit chance, you can go up to like, like as you can see, 9% here, and minus 50% Rampage charge speed. Rampage doesn't really matter, I don't think you're ever going to get Rampage with this build, because you just hit once and then you go, you just walk away and watch them die. But yeah, crit chance, pretty good, because it increases the um, consistency of your Alliance Talisman. So you get back your charges faster. So this, I will say, it's better for single target if you're you if you can't like always guarantee the one shot on bosses. So you might want to do like a third or fourth um northern technique on there. So this helps with that. But the force of nature is good for just clearing in general because every kill consistently gives you five percent or it can go higher like six or seven percent. So yeah, just choose whatever you want. And secondary, the same damage to shock. Um, I picked Spirit because it also increases the base damage of my Northern Technique a little bit. So, But yeah, you don't have to pick Spirit. You can pick Vitality for more health or any other stat you want. So yeah, that's about it for the build. And let's look at the stats. So the stat page is very, very misleading for this build. As you can see, I'm doing 1000 DPS. Okay, if you look at your build, 
it's probably going to do like way more than this. So you might think this build is shit, right? But uh, yeah, it doesn't show how much your ailments are doing. So these parts of the build doesn't really matter. But you can look at this fortitude part, right? 63% all rest, nearly 5k HP. So in total, 42, the 42 basically means your effective health. So at 0%, like basically how how big of a hit you can take, right? So I can take this big of a hit, which is all right, right? And if you take into account your over health, that's double that. So overall, the build is pretty tanking. And you also you also get the uh, a mark of weakness from this. So yeah, it's very pretty consistent in the tower, I would say. And I did a tower to level 30 in about uh, uh an hour and... 10 minutes and 15 minutes around there. Okay, so another thing I want to talk about is the cool thing about using Mobius for this is as you can see, her passive got changed to shield throw, steal, void damage, and inflict curse. So what this means is if you're fighting a let's say level 100 boss and it has super high health and super high health regen, how do you kill it instantly? You just throw your shield and suddenly you have a, um, another ailment inflicted on it. So if you if remember, the ascension power gives you 40% damage for each type of ailment on the enemy. So that's another 40% damage. And we have these augments that gives you in total nearly 100% damage. And the skills give you 15% and 20% 35% in total. So in total you're n you're getting about like n about 180% damage for each type of ailment you inflict. So if you can add a third go ahead but I'm not sure how. Maybe you get a, a teammate to do that. But basically these damage modifiers like I said they double dip in the ailment damage. So whenever you do the curse on it also you'll see your damage like pretty much just double uh, which is really really crazy for the skill points there's only a few that you have to take five points for weapon technique for weapon technique charge speed five points for sundering slam for 30 percent more damage and some utility the 30 percent more damage is multiplicative and it double dips for ailment so it's really about 70 percent more damage five points for critical hit chance for more lion talisman consistency five points for resist for more resist 5 points for ailments for ailment power, ailment duration, and more damage. 3 points into breach. Now, when I first ran this build, I didn't put any points into breach and I wasn't even running a hammer. And because of that, I had a lot of trouble dealing with shoot enemies. Charge heavy attack deals 25% breach damage will definitely help there. And also, shock already increases the breach damage enemy takes. So, it should be rather easy to breach enemies with a hammer with this setup and also if you can hit a weak point this also helps 50% breach damage and another thing you can do is 5 points to takedowns so whenever you kill an enemy with a weapon technique which will happen every now and then you get a spectral takedown to do it freely on a shield enemy which will help kill them the last thing is do not put any points into critical hit damage at least do not put it to level 3 so because level 3 gives you mark of fragility on critical hit. That might mess with your amulet which gives you mark of weakness. Because you can only have one mark on an enemy at a time. And they might override each other. I don't know which one will override which. But you definitely want the mark of weakness here. Because it's more tankiness and you do not need the damage from fragility. So don't put it in critical hit damage. You don't break your mark of weakness. And for the ascension power just... Just get what you have, right? If you have, t if you're level seventy five or higher, get this. Um. Uh, if you have, uh, actually no, I don't use blessing. So the next good one here is okay. Weapon technique charge speed helps, and this two seventy five improve your improve your marks by twenty percent, which will improve your mark of weakness further, um, giving you more survivability. So overall, the build is pretty tanky, does a ton of damage, okay sustain. So yeah, that's about it.